Alrighty, greetings folks. Today we are going to work on an Alpha Legion a Legionnaire, if you will, or Space Marine uh, during the Pre-Horse Heresy. However, they can also work for Chaos Space Marines, which is why I like these a lot, since they both can double for either the Heretic Astartes or regular Astartes. Now to start things off, I give it a pre-basing paint of white this will make the middle that I'm using, which is called Iron Breaker from Citadel Paints, a little brighter than normally. Normally it will come out like a very dark, almost uh, semi-dark steel color, as you can see when I apply some to the base here. Now the reason why I base this miniature white is so that the thin paint I am using will actually exude some of the pigmentation and help desaturate some of the heavy dark metallic colors it has. The same would be said if I wanted to be darker I would use a black coat. And with this being a cool color, the silver I'm using would also benefit very well from a blue coat. The blue coloration would help really pop out the kind of bluish tinge this metal has. Now, part of the reason we are using this very light tone of white undercoat with a very fine, smooth down, watered down silver coat, and so that way when we start applying our thin, 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 sorry, forgot what I was saying for a sec, um, you will use a thin coat of Stegodon Scale Green, which gives it a very nice kind of dark aquamarine color, which is perfect fitting for this Heretic Legion. But I shall do that after this silver paint is dry from its thin coat. Now, if you are new to Warhammer 40k, well, new as in starting your Legion, I do recommend not only Space Marines, but Chaos Space Marines. Both of them really do help out with new players being very player friendly with their wide variety of weaponry models and utility options. I for one am a Tyranid and Chaos Demon player, but I do enjoy using these Chaos Space Marines from time to time. Got to get into this crevice here. Oops. <laughs> now, as you notice, this brush looks a little funky, but that's because it has been through quite a lot of painting. I don't know, 350 models for my Tyranid Legion, but it's a, it's still a good basing brush. And when it gets, when your brushes get really low or matted like mine is, you can actually get scissors when it's finally time to get rid of it, snip off the brush ends, and turn it into a dry brush. That will give your brushes extra time to make use of themselves. Alright. Whoops. <laughs> Made a slight mistake. I was not supposed to paint the gun yet. That was for a later a later coat. I need to keep it white so when I apply the red, it will look like a nice furnished weapon. So I'm going to let that dry real quick and then apply a medium, medium heavy Corax white coat, which is similar to what I used for the basing of this model. I'll just do that real quick before we get started on the stick it on scale green color coat. As you hear and also see, I'm dipping my, I'm cleaning my brush before I use another color. It's very important so that way your colors do not mix. But it also gives you time to, oops, I almost dropped my paint. <laughs> 
gives you time to work on your process a little bit. Generally this paint takes about, if you're using a thin, not heavily watered down coat, takes roughly two to three minutes to dry. You can make it dry quicker by using a fan or pulling a SNES cartridge and blowing on it. <laughs> which is currently what I'm doing right now. Now this video is a slightly quick way to paint your, a quick way to paint your army. If you're rushing, wanting to try out some speed painting, or just don't want to spend a lot of time working on your guys. And it's totally okay. Now that that is dry, I'll be getting my stick it on scale green color, lightly adding some water to my brush before using application, and we shall put this thin layer of it all over the miniature. Hmm. It appears I did not take my own advice and wet the brush a little too much. <laughs> Sorry, right, we all make mistakes sometimes. But it's how we learn from those mistakes is what makes us better. All right. Now watering down your paint helps it apply smoothly, but also gets all into all those little nooks and crannies that you wanna get into. And we're just going to put this all over our miniature. About like one coat. Usually we'll do it, but with how wet I want it to be, so it could fill into all the recesses, two coats will do it. Now I do apologize for the choppiness of this video. It might not be very... Well, to see, I'm currently using my phone to record everything since I do not have enough funds in order to buy myself an actual camera and a voice recorder, uh, uh microphone, sorry, due to uh, current events. But that is totally fine as long as I'm able to help you guys out and give some nice little ideas and tips, I can do the best to do so. And I do pretty well with painting miniatures. I've been doing it for quite a while. I've actually also been sculpting and painting, oops, used a little too much there, for many years now. I like to do it a little simple and let my colors really shine out compared to the other work. I still have quite a bit to learn on how to shade and base my colors a little better. But you know what? We're all learning and everyone has their own different learning curve and ways to do things. And that is totally fine. Do not let others set your limitations, not even yourself. And everyone can always improve on something. But the most important rule is if you enjoy it, then it's totally fine. If you're not enjoying it, then maybe it's not the right thing to do. Or maybe not the right color scheme. Or maybe just not the right hobby. We're all experimenting in the grand scheme of things. Just depends on if we find something that clicks. As you see, with all the with this thin layer, you can start seeing the metal pigmentation starting to change a little more to a deep aquamarine color. After a second coat, we'll get to what we want to be. Much like with the back here. This got dry before everything else, so now I'm applying the second thin coat 
And as you can see, with it being so thin, it retains the metallic undercoat onto this color. <laughs> That's one coat for the general body done. A jetpack backpack slash breathing container slash whatever these reavers use in their covert ops. I'm not great on Space Marine lore, but I do know a lot about Chaos and Chaos Demon specifically and Tyranids. So yeah, that's not my forte with Space Marines. <laughs> Alright, well let's just try before we apply our second coat. See you in a bit. Alright. There we are. After our second coat, we now have our Stegodon Steel Scale Green Metallic Power Armor. Now you can do the same process with any other color for any metal. It really makes it shine to give it that nice metallic glossiness. As you can see, with the base coat of the Iron Breaker Metal on top of the white base, compared to the Sekadon Green, it really makes it pop. Same with the base white color up here. Our next... Our next... Oops, sorry, kind of blanked out. Our next step is to get a little bit of a contrast black templar on a fine tip brush. Or, if you don't have a fine tip brush, put it on the edge of your regular basing brush and just lightly dip it into those recesses that I will show you soon. Get a good amount on our brush. Not a lot. A lot goes a long way and put it into the recesses here where the leather and the undermarkings here on the ribs, the legs the underside here the back of the knees and the heel section right here and also these little belts right here and here our contrast paint and or shade will help not only tint it black but seep into the recesses to make it darker as you see here and then the very edges that are sticking out from the mold of the model will help separate it from the black and give it a lighter tone so that way you can really see the shadow compared to everything else also I apologize if I sound a little weird currently has some allergies going on. It's really messing with how I'm speaking. <clears throat> See, I will get this right here. As you can see, just adding that little bit of black is already making a difference to the model. Get a little bit on the gloves here. Now most people are all in the miniature painting industry are a little iffy on, sorry, industry, <laughs> profession. And regular painters who don't do this for a living seem to be a little bit iffy with these contrast paints. They either like them, they don't, or heavily critique them with how not so useful they are. I, for one, actually enjoy these contrast paints in good hands and with a bit of knowledge you can actually push these quite a long way into your miniature painting they work as if they are both a very watered down basing paint and a shade paint or a wash if you will if used very lightly lightly as in watered down because it is already watery to begin with
It's some of these colors are good for beginning painters too. They help erase some of the steps, but I will say it's a little on the expensive side, being roughly eight US dollars for each of these pots right here. Oops. I like that big. About the size of your pinky almost. Eight dollars for that paint. But if you use it sparingly and very well, and in the different ways you can do so, then it goes quite a long way. And as previously mentioned, it helps beginner painters get a hold of the hobby. And gives another unique tool for intermediate and expert painters as well. All right, now that all of the underside leather has been taken care of, I will now be heading to these belts and giving them the and these straps right here on this reaver sergeant the same treatment as I did earlier. Now this is very thin black, which is called black templar, so it darkens your areas, but also picks up some of the pigmentation from the paints you used previously. If you want it to be darker, just put a second coat on it, and you'll be good to go. It also dries fairly quickly, as you already see when I started painting other spots. It's become very dry. So I'm rubbing it, that thing's coming off. Now, as you see me painting here, I'm holding the base of the miniature. Some people buy the modeling... modeling? My bad. They buy the model holders from GW or other hobby stores, or they make their own by getting a bottle cork that you get from like wine or beer or oils or certain things like that and then making a little pin on their miniature and jabbing it into that cork to help hold it. You can also buy corks at a hobby store too. But another trick is you can actually wear one of the plastic blue gloves that you get from the stores for like medical purposes or like using harmful chemicals and materials, such as bleach or resin, in my case, and bleach too, I clean at home. Now we will also be hitting these grenades and health packs up here too, with the same black wash. This will help give them a defined look, especially once we go back to them, to give them a different color. Same with all these, the, these, I'm blinking on the name, the giant combat knife holster, and all of these different little pouches on the model as well, with the black washer, black contrast paint. Now, part of the reason why I enjoy Alpha Legion's color scheme is one, it's a cool color scheme. Cool meaning there's lots of like blues and light blue tones, like your greens, whatnot. There's, I'm blinking out. It's not like I haven't been doing art, painting and all the paint wheel for years, but you know what? When you don't talk about them a lot, you kind of forget. But a lot of cool colors help make things pop. Especially if you're using their opposite colors. Which I will show you on this marine later. Oh, where'd he go? There he is. 
We're already starting to hop off my little painting board here to kill some heretics. Or, in this guy's case, kill some non-believers of the Chaos Gods. Since the Alpha Legion is a worshipper of Chaos Undivided. In the lore, Chaos Undivided is when the four Chaos God Legions decide to group up together and put aside their differences to help destroy a harmful enemy. Or, in some cases, hide their schemes. <clears throat> in order to thwart their brethren. Alright. With all that done, we're now going to touch up this little power cable right here, which I totally forgot to do. <laughs> I'm keeping it silver and just lightly applying this black on top of it to give it a nice power cable look. Same with this meter right here. Then we'll also touch up the hilt of the blade right here and the handle. Just very lightly, just a little bit can help differentiate it from the blade as you see there. Very thin on this white metal, gives it a sort of dark steel tint. And helps separate it from blade, hand, glove, dropping. <laughs> Whoops. Now that we're done with that, we're actually going to be touching up the hair on this model. Now, typically, sergeants do not wear helmets. In this case, for the Reaver Sergeant, which is a type of Space Marine. Very used for tactical squads and hitmen. They're a really good model for Kill Team as well, which is a sub... Subpar? Not subpar. <laughs> which is another game mode of Warhammer 40k. It is a smaller setup, which is great for new players. You can have 3 to 20 models in your team, which if you buy one of the starter boxes, you have a vast majority of models that can be used in it. Or, another example, you can buy one of the small infantry sets, like the Tau Pathfinder Squad, the Tau Breacher and Fire Warrior Squad, the Tyranid Hormagant Squad, although for that one you're also going to need a a Tyranid Warrior, unless if you just want to run pure Gene Stealers, then you could just buy the Gene Stealer box, and you're good to go with that. It's very, Kill Team is a very competitive, but also set mini Warhammer gaming style. It doesn't necessarily play like your regular 40k games, since it's more small battlefield tactics, and learning to adapt to your enemy combat. Now with this skull face mask right here, we're actually going to put a little, just a very small amount of this black on it. Very, very small amount. You don't want to make it look too dark. As I currently just did there. Well. You could be Black Mask. Alright. We'll let that dry for a quick second. Don't forget to wipe your brush and wipe it off on a piece of tissue paper, toilet paper, or paper towel. It will help absorb any water on your brush and remove any excess on it. As that mask is drying, we can actually get out our contrast Blood Angels red and begin coloring the gun and the wax seal on his arm right, he right here. There's a small wax seal that a lot of the Astartes units have. So just going to put a little dab of that right there. Now, the reason why I chose 
a red weapon. Well, currently with that amount, it's looking pinkish, like a hot pink. The reason why I chose red is one, it makes it really pop, but two, against a cool color scheme like this right here, being its polar opposite, it actually separates itself very well from the rest of the model, making it the focus point. Especially in a kill team or a regular 40k game, so that way your opponent and yourself know what weapon they are using. If I were to make it the same color as the rest of it, or like a black, it would be hard to distinguish it at first glance. Plus, red weapons look pretty cool. Just as much as they're black weapons. Alright, while that is drying, we are going to get out our Reaper Miniature Tan Skin Paint. Put a little bit of dab on my paint table here. And we will color this Reaver Sergeant's skin. Much like how we did the hair up here, the skin right here. It's a little hard to zoom in with my phone's camera at the moment. I'm going to be painting this that tan skin color. And then once it dries, we'll give it a white wash and then dry brush a little bit of a darker tone of the skin to really make the facial features pop. Alright. Now what I'm actually going to do is get a little bit of this water down and put it in the hair. This will help highlight a little bit. And let the black really seep into that color. Make it almost look like this guy has some hair missing or got it burnt off during combat. And this paint also dries fairly quickly, so I just got a little bit more of my brush to paint that over. Bam, look at that. The warm color of this tan skin also helps separate it from the rest of the model as well. Alright, now that the flesh of his face is dry, we're actually going to get a little bit of our apothecary white contrast paint and put it over his skin. This will help fill in the recess and also give it a slight tone and really make the darker colors of the skin pop. It will help fill in a recess shading and also give a little bit on the eyes here. This also paint this also paints. This also dries fairly well. Now I'm going to get a little bit of the Corex white I was using earlier and paint the eye sockets here. It's very, very, very lightly. We'll get just a smidge of Abaddon black here to make the pupils. Just tiny little dots. Oops, that is a contrast. I almost put purple for his eyeballs. <laughs> Alright, now we'll just put just a very fine, fine dot here. As you can tell, you can already see the pupil inside of the iris. And then another right there. 
There we go. Now, I honestly prefer having helmets on these guys because I cannot do eyeballs for Jack. And I just like the whole idea of you not being able to see their face making it even more menacing. Really let their big stature put fear into the hearts of you. Now, back to our weapon. We're going to get some of our Black Templar here. And we are going to put it on the hold, the hold, our little groove right here, where usually you would hold your weapon. Just put it all over that, give it a nice dark red, almost burgundy look for the weapon. As you already see it doing it on that side. Alright, now we are going to bring it back out, our Iron Breaker paint, use our same fine brush, and touch up this panel right here, make it as bright as you can. So put the Alpha Legion color scheme, and they have a lot of, well, they mainly have a metal metallic color all around their body. And on each of these little metal platings here that you usually see on the Astartes and Chaos Marines. You gotta paint. Now this is a more intuitive process because it takes time to use our little brush here and paint up these spots. Now, as I said earlier, this is just a fairly simple color scheme if you want to knock out a bunch of your army. If you want to take this to the full advantage, you can get a darker, wetted down version of the Stetagon scale green and put it into all the recesses you can see here on the armor. And also, get like a sticker or hand paint the Alpha Legion symbol on here, which is a three-headed Hydra. Now we're gonna get some silver, put it on the skull and sword right here. 